Hello from the cabin. Sitting on my couch today, resting my shoulders. <sighs> I've spoken so far in my videos about not talking about A Course of Love. And then I yammered away about it. And I spoke about my spiritual practice. And today I'm kind of wanting to talk about not having a spiritual practice. And, you know, words are so funny. You know, you just get started on something and there you go. Uh, but what I mean is that discipline, you know, that you maybe have towards your spiritual life. Um, and sometimes you just need to, or I have needed to, let go of it. You know, it's like uh, just finding your life, accepting and finding a life that works for you. That lets you be yourself and your true self. You know, sometimes this cabin feels like the only place that I can do that. I've kind of given you this picture of my lovely mornings out here, but sometimes I run here like a crazy person. I have a daughter and a grandson who live with Donnie and me, and, you know, most of the time they feel like the reason. <laughs> <clears throat> the being here, especially Henry, is sort of like the definition of the sweet life. But sometimes there's the sweet life and the I want to pull my hair out life going on in the same day or the same hour. And so sometimes I can be out here and have my peaceful times and my escape, if you want to call it that. And sometimes I have somebody coming out wanting me to help them find their keys or looking for a babysitter. And having heard myself use the word escape, I'll just back up a little bit. And so it's sort of like these words, you know, it's like practice, spiritual practice is this, you know, can become a thing. And the word escape can portray something that I don't mean to portray. Taking ourselves away, giving ourselves the time and the life that, you know, we're interested in having. <laughs> That's not an escape. I floundered around a lot, looking for a role that fits and looking to break free of roles that no longer fit. And I used to say I didn't want a role at all. And in a way that's still true. It's one of those word things again. But having my daughter come home as an adult it seemed like she came home without a role. It's like I, I was just sort of stuck in my parenting role and she didn't have one anymore. And so that made me sort of do this little bit of a switch in my feeling about roles. Like, <clears throat> and I don't mean that you need a role, anybody needs a role, and yet there's some sort of a definition that our lives take on when they become our lives, you know, as, as we're wanting to live them. And what I've found is, you know, the things that I've sometimes, you know, blamed on other people don't see the kind of person I am or they don't understand what my life is. I think the more I accept my changes, the more other people can accept them. But in the meantime, <laughs> you know, as all of this is going on, and there can be times that you're in transitions that are so huge that you don't know who you are, and you don't know what your needs are, and you feel sort of needy, but really what you're looking for is the need fulfillment that it is to live your own life truly, to that feeling of being really alive. There's a place in A Course of Love, I can't remember exactly where now, where needs are spoken of as tools, and as tools that are as valuable to us as 
those of like meditation. And I think what that's saying is that needs point us in a direction. So when you're in your, you know, times of change, your, your you know, midlife time, or your, uh, when you're reoriented by your spiritual life, uh, your, your need, like for time alone, can show you a new direction that kind of pull you or push you or uh, compel you toward change in a way that's n that doesn't feel forced. You know, sometimes I try to force myself to change and that never works, you know. <laughs> it's like change just comes and, you know, that flowing with it, uh, you know, people talk about accepting what is and it seems as if accepting what is right now is accepting that things are in change. You know, when I was uh, readying the given self for publication, I sent it to a woman for review who had written on what she called ordinary, extraordinary women. And it turned out that these women really weren't all that ordinary, and she didn't know quite what to do with the attitude that she found in my book. <laughs> and that's really the main thing that I wanted to portray today, is sort of the uh, other side of any impression I might have given that I live only this one sort of peaceful spiritual life. I kind of <sighs> maybe it doesn't say a whole lot about me, but when I see only that one side of somebody and they seem, you know, really perfect and and like someone I would aspire to be, or that they, I don't know, it, it's just I like to see a whole person, you know. I spoke of it in The Given Self, but I, it's just my favorite example. Um, I like the writer James Hillman, and he said at this one, in this one interview he did that, he kind of faulted himself for his crabbiness until he realized that his crabbiness preserved his solitude. And, you know, your solitude really is what allows you to have a creative life. And a creative life is really a free life. I think that's what we're all going for. And it was so funny doing the first two videos that I did. It was very freeing. I was having a little bit of that daily life angst. And when I started them, I got so into it. I just felt really super happy doing them. And then when I saw them, this was you know, something I've never done before. And when I saw them and I looked relaxed and happy, and I thought somehow, totally by accident, I captured me. I captured me the way I truly am, and that's how I felt about them. And it was just amazing to me. <laughs> and then after um, I did those two and some time went by and some other things happened, and I was thinking about doing the next one. And I set up the camera and I was trying out an angle. and. So I turned, hit the record button. <laughs> I'm not recording. Christ. <laughs> no, I have. Oh, good grief. Ah. Uh.